So everybody knows that you need to study data structures and algorithms problems to get good at coding interviews. And to do that, you're probably going to go to leetcode.com. But how many times do you sit down to solve a problem and you just can't focus, you can't get into the groove of things, or you actually do solve a problem or look at the solution and a couple of days later you go back and you just have no idea what you're looking at. Well, today I'm going to be talking about not necessarily how to solve problems or the actual data structures and algorithms, but just the mentality that you should have when you sit down at your desk or with your laptop to do your work. So let's think about the timeline of sitting down to do a leak code problem or two, something that should take you an hour, maybe an hour and a half. My first tip is that I think it's important to just come to your desk or your workspace with a fresh mind. So get up, go walk to the other side of the room and back, put your phone somewhere else. If you just finished, say, working on a computer science assignment, then don't necessarily go straight into Google. We don't want you to get burnt out. Take a little bit of a break. It's it's good, especially to kind of just look into the distance for a little bit and just, just read set and then come into your leak code stance. There's a ton of productivity and focus tips and tricks on the internet. I'm not going to be getting into most of them here because I want to focus on leak code. Step one, go to neatcode.io and pick a problem. If you have an, a different list of problems that you're working through, that works too. But personally, I like neatcode.io. The best way to do it, I think, is to work through every easy problem and then every medium problem until eventually you're pretty good at interviewing. So once you sit down with a fresh mentality, pick a problem, you want to read through the question and give it maybe 20, 25 minutes max to come up with a solution. Any more than that, and you're kind of just wasting your time. It's not gonna magically come to you, but when you're sitting here thinking of the problem, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to be playing with the numbers, with the data structures in your head, watching things move around. You know, you, you want to develop an intuition for how these problems get solved. You don't wanna just think of what the code is gonna eventually look like. Like. So within that 20 to 25 minute span, if you do come up with a theoretical solution to the problem, then it's good to actually implement in code. I know a lot of people tend to skip the implementation, and I do think there is something to be said for skipping the implementation step of leak code problems, but that's kind of an advanced maneuver that should only be done by people who can confidently solve easies and most mediums. Once you get to that kind of skill level, and don't lie to yourself, you're like you'll know when you can confidently just sit down and solve a leak code medium, at that point, it's probably more about exposing yourself to as many data structures and algorithms as possible, and you can be reasonably confident in your programming skills. However, for your freshman in computer science or sophomore in computer science, definitely solve every problem, even after you look at the solution, if you didn't get it in the first 25 minutes. Whether you solved it yourself or you couldn't, as you're reading through the solution, some people advise reading through bit by bit and then seeing if you can come up with the rest of the solution on your own. I don't necessarily know that that works for me. Personally, I kind of need to see the whole solution, get the get the big vision for everything, and then go back and reread the solution with the greater context of where things are going. And one thing to keep in mind is with these solutions, I don't care if you're getting them from Neatcode.io, random articles on leak code, or Reddit posts on the internet, there's tons of resources to find solutions. But if you only come up with an O of N solution to a problem whose optimal solution is O of N log N, then you got that wrong for all intents and purposes especially if you didn't even know that an O of N log N solution existed. Because you're going to think in the interview, the interviewer is going to say, okay, what are some potential solutions to this problem? And they're going to want to hear from you, oh, I could do it this way in O of N, oh, I could do it this way in O of N log N, and weigh the different pros and cons of the different potential solutions. So for me, any problem where I couldn't think of multiple different solutions or every solution that is shown to me at the end, you know, I considered myself getting that wrong because I know on the interview day, even if I could have passed all the test cases, it wouldn't have been optimal performance. And it probably wouldn't have gotten me a job offer. After you have looked at the potential multiple solutions, it's important to then close out that tab, get away from the solution, maybe you know spend a second thinking about it, but go back and try to code it yourself from scratch. And you'll be surprised just how often you'll completely forget some very important detail to the solution minutes after looking at it. If this is happening to you, then it's a sign that when you're reading the solution, you're not truly in the moment, you're not really focusing in on what you're reading, and you're not absorbing the information. And that's okay. You know, everybody, sometimes when they're reading a book, you'll read an entire page and be like, wait, what, what just happened on that entire page? I read the words, but I couldn't tell you for the life of me what it was. Leak code can get kind of dry, kind of boring sometimes. So that might happen a lot, but it's important to call yourself out. And to do that, just try and implement the solution after you look at it without having it open right in front of you. 
If you can pass the test cases after coming up with the solution or looking at the solution and you think you have a genuine understanding of how the data structures and algorithms are working, then good for you, you can move on to the next problem. But I do think that in a couple of days, you should come back to that same problem and try to solve it again, because it's that active recall of the solution that is going to really cement all of the concepts in your brain. And if in a couple of days you come back to the problem and you still can't remember the solution, you can't come up with it, even though just a couple days ago you solved it, then you might not be absorbing the information optimally. And that's at another point where you might want to consider how you're learning. Do you need to switch something up? Do you need to focus better? Do you need a different productivity hack or even just a different way of tackling problems? I right now am telling you one way that you can go about leak code, but I know people who never really solved the problem. They just tore through data structures and algorithms textbooks until leak code was just kind of easy to them. If you do enough high level theoretical math, a byproduct is that you're going to get good at leak code. If you do a bunch of competitive programming, a byproduct is that you're going to get good at leak code. And that might not be the most efficient way to get good at passing your interviews, but it certainly is a strategy that one might utilize if the just the thought of sitting down and leak coding there's no competition to it it's just too boring for you maybe try competitive programming to like you know up the motivation and at least keep you focused even if it isn't the most efficient way to go about things a lot of the things i talked about in this video loosely resemble what's taught in the book ultra learning which talks about focus going back and using spaced repetition to genuinely learn and remember things and developing an intuition for things beyond just step one step two step three getting in the getting in the motion learning how to leak code is not just strictly about getting a job. It's about learning how to solve problems, learning data structures and algorithms, and developing your critical thinking skills. It's commonly said that a sign of mastery over a topic is the ability to teach it, and that's basically what they are looking for in interviews. The interviewer is looking for you to teach them the solution to the problem. You might be able to solve a problem, but you're not going to be able to teach the solution to the interviewer unless you genuinely understand how all of these problems and their multiple solutions work. So don't memorize, don't grind, take your time and develop an intuition. And I, I have faith that, you know, pretty much anyone with enough time and effort will be able to get good at lead code and data structures and algorithms. That's going to be it for this video. If you want to learn more about the rest of the interview process, like, comment, subscribe. Peace.